Hello all. Hello all. We'll go ahead and get started with the webinar right now. As a collaborative effort, effort from you and for Adian, we would be like we would be taking some time to get more familiarization with the product, and then we would be sorting upon or they, we would be working upon on making some optimal solutions on how Fedina can be smartly implemented in your institution. So before going to the webinar, uh, I would like to let you know that uh, for the complete course of your course of the course of the webinar, your microphones will be muted off and we will be dealing up with the queries in the queries round once the webinar has been finished. So before going more into the product, I would like to let you know that basically there are four kinds of user. The admin user, the employee user, the parent user and the student user. When it comes to the parent and the student, the amount of privileges or what all they can do, the basically the powers or the privileges as we have termed it in our application, Fedina, are limited. But when it comes to the employee, the employee has a very level of privileges. So based upon the task he, have, he or she has been assigned, he would be having the privileges. And then comes the admin. Admin has the sole privileges of almost everything in the application. So we will be logging on to the admin account and seeing what all things can be done or how beautifully Fedina can be implemented in this. How beautifully your institution can use Fedina. So basically the username and password for the admin account is admin and admin123 which can be changed at later period. So you need to first of all log into your account. As you can see it's dpol.fedina.org in my case. So I've logged into this account and on logging into this account you will be able to see the login page where you need to enter the admin and the password. And then on clicking login you will be redirected to a page which is known as the dashboard of Fedina. The dashboard of Fedina is the one that you are looking right now. So let's get started with the general settings. General settings is the place where we are letting the application know more about the institution. So here we enter the school name or the college name, the school or college address and the school or college phone and the rest. So here we do have an option of the student attendance type where we can opt for the subject wise attendance or the daily bus attendance and then we have the financier started and financier end date then comes starting receipt number where whenever you type the receipt number of the receipt number let us say that the receipt number that you will be typing up here will be let us say K001 so the subsequent receipt numbers will be K002, K003 and so on. So K001 will be the receipt number of the first receipt that will be generated from your application and the subsequent receipt numbers will be an auto incremented value of the one that you have entered up here. Then comes the language. Fedina is available in all exciting languages including English, Dutch, Spanish, French and so on. And then we have this time zone. So you can adjust the application as per the time zone that you are in then comes the country we need to enter the country that we are in then the currency type the currency type that you will be entering up here is surely important as it will be used up in all the transactions that you will be using up or all the transactions that you will be making up in Fedina then comes the upload logo so using this feature you will be able to upload your logo into the application and the logo that you will be uploading up here will be available as the login page, the logout page and the PDF generated from the application. Then comes the network state which can be, which can be set as online or offline. Actually this is 
uh, are not of much use we will be coming more about it in the later part of the query then comes the including grading system grading system uh, basically we have this marks and marks and grades kind of grading system apart from which if you want to have the solid grading systems like CC, CWA and GPA you can opt to have them then comes a the Moodle URL so apparently you might like to have Moodle integration with Ferina so to do so you can enter the Moodle URL here and then Ferina will be in integrated to your Moodle account then comes the Moodle then comes the theme Ferina is available in all exciting things like, like orange, black, green, yellow, blue and grey then we have an option here called the enable auto increment student admission number enable auto increment student admission number helps you to write the admission number of an student for the first time and the subsequent students who will be getting admitted into the application will have an auto incremented value of the one that you have been entering up here like let us say that your student admission number of the first student is K001 then the rest of the students will be having K002, K003 and so on supposingly if you don't want this feature you can just disable this option to type some admission number of your own the same goes up for the employee number two and then here the option of enable news comment moderation helps the admin to moderate the comments that are coming up for the news that is published by the admin himself then we have this enable sibling which helps the parent to log into the war log into his account by using a, any of the single words corresponding parent ID and then the enable first time login change password as the name suggests and asks you to change the password for the when you will be logging into the system for the first time then we have this enable OAuth which helps you to sign into Google to sorry to sign into Fedina using your Google account so if you have a Google account and you can integrate this with Fedina and once this is done you will be able to log into Fedina using your Google accounts so once all the settings are done now it's time to update the application so once it's updated now we are ready to move upon to the next of these settings so let's start off with the manage student category so in your institution you would like to categorize your student into into different different categories like let us say you can term them as locals hostlers staff students and so on so in such a case you can write the name of the category like let us say hostlers and then save it on clicking save this hostlers will be created as a category so once this, once this has been created you can even delete the same or edit it if required so the category that you will be creating up will be available as a drop-down menu in the admission page of the students then comes the add admission addition detail the add addition the add admission addition detail helps you to create some fields of your own like let us say that you have been using some of the fields that are already available in Ferina or the inbuilt data fields but you would like to have some more additional fields apart from the one that is available so in such a case you need to type the name of the additional field like let us say now I'm entering the additional field as letter the SSN number and then the text box and then I can uh, input whether it's a text box or text area or select box I have the option of entering up the input method and then choose whether it's mandatory or not once it is done an additional field will be created and now this additional field that's created will be available while using while admitting the students so once these all settings are done, like let's start upon creating some courses and batches for your students. So to create a course or a batch, you need to go to manage course link and then type the new link from here and then type the course name. The course name, like let us say, the course name can be grade 1. You can use or you can opt to use this Excel name or 
you cannot if you can even go without using it as this part of section this part of the form the section name is not mandatory and then you can go to type on a code for it and then the grading system whether this is normal or GPA CWA or CC so in this case let's go for the normal grading system and then typing the batch number as a 2014 would create would create a course called grade 1 with a batch A 2014 and hitting the new button this hitting the save button would create a course for me with the name of grade 1 So this is the way how we should be creating some grades into the application. Moreover, like let us say that once you have created some courses, now you it's time to create some batches for your for your uh, the grade that you, that is created just now. Like let us say I'm I've created this G1A 2014, and now I would like to create some more batches along with this A 2014. So to do so, I need to click upon new button. And on clicking new button, I will be able to write the name of the new batch under G1. I had A 2014 then, and now I am adding some B 2014 again. So once you have made the batches A 2014, you can make some subjects for the same, and then the master fees. Once the subjects and master fees are done for the batch A 2014, that can be imported by the subsequent batches like B 2014 will be able to have all the subjects of A 2014 if I am enabling this option from here. So This is the way how you will be able to create some courses and batches. Now let's move upon to creating or managing the subjects of a batch. The batch that you've created just now was G1 so let's go to G1 and start making some batches for them, some subjects for them. So just clicking upon add normal subject would hit up a light box which would ask me to type the name of the subject like let us say I am entering it as maths, the code being MAT and then the maximum weekly classes as 4. And of course it should be an exam so no exam should be disable up from here and again I'm hitting the save button my normal subject would be created you can even create some more elective groups so to create an elective group first of all you need to have a group name and now hitting the save button a group with the name of elective group will be created now you can even go on creating some subjects for it and once you created some subjects using this add button you will be able to assign different different students to this subject that you have created under this group elective group 1 so this is the way how you should be doing your subjects and all and now let's move upon to the actually admitting up of a student so to admit a student all you need to do is just go to the dashboard hit upon this admission part and then type on the forms here so Let's start up with the step one of admission. So the name of the student is Rahil and the course to which he or she is there. Let us say it should be grade one. And then the date of birth is to be entered. And then the rest of the details are to be entered like the gender, blood group, birthplace and so on. So as it's part, part of a demo so I would be skipping up this part. But we would suggest you to fill up this form as, it's, as it would be quite handy when while you would be liking to, you would like to retrieve the data from the application. So here we can even enter the biometric ID, enable SMS features for this person and even upload the user photo of the student who is getting admitted. On hitting save and proceed, you are redirected to the second part of the admission or the step 2 of admission where you are asked to enter the uh, sibling. So if this particular person has a sibling in the institution, he or she will be 
added like let us say I have this person called Sanjukta Das and this person Sanjukta Das is actually a sibling of Rahil so I can just attach these two persons so all the data of Sanjukta Das will be copied to that of the Rahil I mean only the parent details so this way the parent the who being the same person of both these both these students will be able to log into the system using any of the corresponding parent IDs. Now the next part of the admission is to enter the education details of the student. You can even skip this part by clicking skip and then comes the additional details. So additional details is the place where we have created some more details or some more data fields for our app for our student so let us say that I have entered a lot of details like some of the parts are mandatory marked so we need to enter some some number here the passport number and something like this so once you've entered this just click upon save and proceed and now you will be redirected to the profile page of the students the data that you have entered will be stored up in this profile page of each of the students. So this is how an admission of a student is to be carried out. Moreover, this profile does not only help you just to see the data up here, it also helps you to see the reports, the guardian details, and if you want to send an email to this particular person, you can even do so, provide to the condition that you have this SMTP settings done, and this email features enabled for this particular person. Even the more link from here helps you to manage the fees and the gallery, hostel and library and transport for this particular person. So now let's go to the student details. So once you've entered the data using the admission part, now it's time to retrieve the data. So like let us say that you want to know the details of a person with the name of Rahil. So this typing RAH will give you the most possible matches and then on clicking the required person you will be related to the place where the profile of the student is available now if you want to make some more advanced kind of searches the advanced search button is here for you and you will be able to make some advanced searches for all the students in your institution like let us say I want to make the list of all the students who have got this B positive blood group so just on clicking B positive blood group and not entering any other detail I would be able to get the list of all the students or all the present students who are studying in the institution and having a blood group B positive will be available in this list so this is how Fedina can be useful by using up this particular application this particular feature so now it, we have this manage users part where you will be able to manage your users may it be the parent or the employee or the student you will be able to manage all your users up here like let us say if you want to name the person with the name of SAN so all the most possible matches will be available here and now you can even go through each one of them so like let us say that the employee with the name of Sandeep Panda can be seen so here you have the option of viewing the profile of the person changing even the password of the person and at a point of time if you want to edit the privilege of a person you can also do so using this edit privilege link moreover as you can see that this edit privilege comes up with a lot many options here so like let us say that the person Sandeep Panda on the being an employee he has the privilege of admission of admission students control student view student attendance register student attendance view and applicant registration so these all links are to be enabled for him so that these all privileges will be available so this is the this is the reason why we say that for an employee the privileges are varied So this is all about the managed users now let's go to the human resources and then we'll be able to explore the rest of the features in the application in HR module we have this settings and employee management and a couple of other links now let us go to each of the links in detail to know what all things are there in store for us 
on clicking setting, I get this option called Add Employee Category, Add Employee Position, Department, Create, Category, Bank Detail, and Additional Detail. In Add Employee Category, you will be able to create some new categories for your employees. So here you need to type the name of the category, type a prefix here, and then enter the status is active or inactive right now and hit on the create, create button this way you will be able to create some new categories for your employees then we have this add employee position in add employee position you will be able to create some new positions for your employees like let us say I am creating a position called position 5 for someone in the category 1 and I'm clicking create I will be able to create some positions under a category then we have the departments so in your school or college you will, you will be having some departments when it comes to college you have this physics chemistry biology department or else you can even have the departments like academics and then hostel and so on so you can create your department name here followed by the department code and then on hitting create button you will be able to create your own department then we have this add employee create which is of great importance while as it helps you to manage a priority for your grades that you have created so like let us say that you have this grade 1 then you will be having a some some priority for this and then maximum periods per day and maximum periods per week so like let us say for this grade 1 that I have already created, we have this priority as 1. So any person or any employee, to be more specific, who belongs to, the, who belongs to this grade 1 has a priority 1 and the maximum period per day is 2 and the maximum period per week that he can take is 10. So this is the way you will be able to create some grades for your institutions for your employees and then we have this add payroll category in add payroll category you'll be able to create some new categories for your employees or new payroll categories for your employees so in add payroll ca category you need to type the name of the category like let us say I'm creating a category payroll category called as winters bonus and then I need to type the percentage uh, if it's a earning so it should be a percentage of some of the already created categories like we have this number of categories already created for this particular instance so let us say it is a 10% of the basic pay and if it's a deduction you need to enable this since it's not a deduction bonus unable deductions so we need to click upon this create button and now 10% of basic pay will be the the winter's bonus for all of your employees so this is how we can create payroll categories in general for all our employees we have even have a procedure to create some special categories for some special employees we'll be putting for the light upon it in these while we progress into the HR set HR part Hello, is my voice audible to all of you? Seems like there is some audio setting problem again. Hello, is my voice audible to all of you? Okay. So this, uh, please check your audio settings so that we can uh, proceed up with the... Meanwhile, we'll be proceeding up with the webinar right now. So going up to the HR part. So as we have done with the settings part, so we were left with a couple of settings called the add bank detail and add additional detail. So in add bank detail, so in add bank detail, you need to click upon this bank detail and you can create some more fields so that you will be able to, to add some bank details for your employees. I've created two fields here which says bank account number and bank name. 
and then we have this add additional detail in add additional detail which is similar to the one that we've created for the students or which means that if you want to have some more fields apart from the one that are already available in Fedina you need to type the name of the here name of the additional detail here and then the input method whether it's a text box or text area or select box or so and then on hitting the create button you will be able to create some additional details for all of your employees you will be able to have an additional field for all of your employees with the name of SSN so that was all about the settings part now let's get into the real job what all can be done from the HR part let's start up with the employee management in employee management we have these two links which says the employee admission and employee subject association in employee admission let us admit a sample employee so that we will be able to know what all things can be done in the first name like let us say I have the student with the name of Raz the middle name is to be entered and then the last name followed by the email ID the gender the date of birth and the department category position and then a grade so having entered all the details you should be entering the rest of the details also like the job title qualification experience info and so on so after entering all the details like this just click upon save and proceed so that we will be able to proceed on to the step 2 of employee admission in step 2 of employee admission you will be able to click you will be able to enter the home address the office address the contact details of your employee and then again save and proceed will lead you to the step 3 of employee admission just type the name of the bank here as I have created the bank detail as bank name and bank account number so these options are available for me right now uh, hitting the save button I'll be able to see the step 4 of employee admission where I'm asked to enter the additional details of all my employees like we need to enter some details for all the mandatory fields that we created here like the medical history and overtime are marked as mandatory so we need to enter something here and then the social security number which I just created for a demo has come up so on clicking save and proceed I'll be able to see the user privileges options available for this particular person like let us say this privileges for Raz and Raz is a person let's assume is the one who belongs to the library department and he is to be given the librarian privilege so in such a case clicking upon librarian will give him the librarian privilege and on hitting the save button you will be able to proceed on to the next step in this last step or the step 5 of employee admission you will be asked to enter the reporting manager of your employee like let us say first of all you need to type the name of the reporting manager or else you can even search them by department category position and grade then let's search the person reporting manager with a name now on clicking the person's name the name will be highlighted up here and then on save and pro on clicking save and proceed you will be redirected to the payroll part of the employee so here we need to enter the basic things as while making the payroll category from the settings part I have made some payroll categories and then some of the payroll categories were interlinked to that of the basic pay so once I've entered the basic pay all the other things will be coming up of its own so as I have as you have seen the DA and this TA has been interlinked to that of the basic pay so this has come off of its own it has been calculating of its own the percentage wise and then on hitting the save button I will be able to finish this payroll moreover a, apart from the one that has been auto calculated if you would like to enter something manually for this particular person like let us say that you are giving a pay of a category with the name of pay of 750 
for this particular person then you can just type the same and on hitting the finish button you will be able to see how the profile of this particular employee looks like so this is how the profile can be managed this is all about how you can make an admission of your employee now let's move up on to the M rest part of the employee management that is the employee subject association in employee subject association we map our employees to a particular batch so that they can teach a particular subject for the batch like let us say for this batch with the name of UKGB 2013 I have this number of subjects created like English, GK, Hindi, Math, Science and so on so if I want to assign some teachers for the subject called English then I have to click upon English up here select the department and then I'll be able to get the list of all the students, all the employees in this particular department so on clicking assign button that particular person will be assigned to teach English for the batch UKGB 2013 so this is the way how we should be dealing up with the employees of the association once this is done now we'll be able to go to the employee leave management in employee leave management we have these four kinds of leave management sections where we add the leave types the leave types can be something like the casual leave or or earned leave and so on you can you need to type the leave name and then the leave code and then the maximum leave count and then if this leave count is to be carried forward to the next time period then you can choose or enable this enable carry forward which will carry forward all the remaining leaves of a person for this particular time period to the next time period now we have the option of attendance register In attendance register you need to enter the department name and once you enter the department name this attendance register looks exactly like a normal register or a real register so here you need to enter the absence of a particular employee rather than the presence of an employee so uh, let's mark one of the person yes Junit uh, we would be uh, dealing up all your queries in the query round once it's done but uh, asking to your query uh, as it's a small time query we would be like to let we would be letting you know as soon as the release is coming up via an email so going up to this uh, register which is exactly the same that looks like a normal register let's click upon this and type the name here so first of all we need to enter the uh, leave type whether it's casual leave or the reason for absence like let us say this person is down by fever so just type fever here and then on, on clicking submit that person will be marked as absent then we have this attendance report at a further point of time if you would like to see the report of all your employees then click just click upon the department and then you will be able to see the reports of all the employees here reset leave basically resets the leave of all your employees so all the employees that all the leaves that are there with all of your employees will be reset whenever you offer this reset leave option then we have this create payslip in create payslip you will be able to create your payslips for all of all of your employees like you can select your employee or create the payslip for each of these for each of your employees individually or you can even use the 
one click payslip generator to generate the payslip of all of your employees for a particular month and if you let us say that you have committed a mistake and then one click payslip revert is the one that you should be opting to to revert the trans to revert the creation of payslip but when it comes to payslip it's always a two way process so first the person who is in charge of the human resources has to create a payslip and then the person who is in charge of finance has to approve it but as you know the admin has the sole privileges so he has the uh, he has the privileges of hr as well as as well as the finance so he can do all, both the processes all by himself now comes the employee search in employee search you will be able to search all of your employees like i have entered raj right now so i will be able to see raj typing the name and then i'll be able to see the profile of the particular employee then if you would like to view the pay slip of all of your employees then you need to select the department select the month and then viewing will give you the list of the pay slips of all of your employees so this is the way how this pay slips can be managed and this completes the hr module now let's go to the finance module so that we can know how all things are done in the finance module starting with the finance we starting in the finance module we will we'll be starting up with the fee section so on clicking fees we are able to see many links here so actually fees is basically a flow of actions so first we create the fees then we manage the fee collection dates then collect the fees and then uh, you can even see the defaulters from this fee defaulters link so let's create some fees for all your students by using this create fees link so first of all let's start with the create category whenever you're creating a category you are creating a basic template and this basic template has to be filled up with some particulars and discounts so that this will be applicable for all the students in your batch for the preferred students in your batch so like let us say i am creating a master category with the name of master cat and then mentioning that this master category is to be applicable for all the batches in the institution so i need to click upon all and then hitting upon the save button would create this master category for all the batches in my institution now it's time to create some particulars for that master category that you have created so let's search the master category to which this particular is to be created i am interested in in creating a master category in creating a particular for this for this category called master cat for the batch 5a 2013 to so do so i need to click upon this type the name of the particular like let us say academic fees and then description and then we need to select upon this criteria for which a particular is to be applicable for like let us say that if this particular if we want this particular to be applicable for all the persons in the batch selected then you have to go to the all button and then if you want to have an specific students who would to whom the particular is to be affected then you need to click upon this admission number button from here and then enter the admission number of all the students separated by commas in this text box and then you even have the liberty of entering the student category for your students like if you want to have a particular a specific particular for a specific category so you can even do so by clicking upon the student category link and selecting the required student category then as it's logically speaking you need to enter the amount of the particular like the particulars created you would like to have some discounts for all of your master categories so let's go let's create some discount by selecting a discount type again the discount type is of three types so you if you want this this discount to be applicable for the whole batch then you can do so 
then if you want this to be applicable for a particular student category you can even do so and then we have the discount type for a particular student so you can enter the name of the student and then the course and then the admission the name of the discount sorry and then the course and then the admission number of the student to whom this discount is to be applicable and then entering the discount will solve the purpose moreover we have this two modes of discount entering if you are entering the percentage then you need to enter this part button of the button and if you are going for the amount so you need to click upon amount and type the amount of the discount so this creates a master fees on the particulars and the discounts for the required batches and then once you have created some fees now it's time to create some fee collection dates for your employees so to create some fee collection dates you need to click upon schedule fee collection then just create a fee collection and then select a category to which category this fee collection is to be affected and then the fee collection name like let us say the name can be January to March and then entering the start date and end date and the due date would create a fee collection for the selected batches on hitting the create button you will be able to create the fees you will be able to create the fee collection date so this is all about how you will be able to create some fee collection date you can even view some fee collection dates using the view link here by selecting the batch and the course then once you have created some fee collection date now it's time to collect the fees from the students so to collect the fees just go upon collect the fees link from here and then the fee submission by course will ask you two features the batch and the fee collection date so let us say I'm entering the batch as 10th 2013 and entering this fee collection date as OTP year end 2013 12 17 so this would mean that I would be able to pay the fees of the student called Sabya or Sandy for this fee collection date of this batch 10th A 2013 so just clicking upon pay fees will pay the fees of the student and moreover if you think that this part of the transaction has to be omitted or is to be changed then just this part of the link of the or the cross link from here helps you to omit the transaction made so moreover all the reverted transactions so this is basically a reverted transaction and all the reverted transactions are stored up in a special part of the of the transactions part in the finance module So once you have created the fee collection date, created the fees and the fee collections are made, you will be able to see the fee structure of all of your student. So like if you need to type the name of the student, like let us say you have been searching for a student called Sandeep and you want to know the fee collections available for him, then you need to fee check the fee collection date and then on checking the fee collection dates, you'll be able to see the fee structure of that particular person. Then we have this fee defaulters like here you will be able to see the defaulters list of all the all the persons who have not paid a particular fee so you need to select the course and then the batch and then the fee collection date here so I'm selecting a course where we would have some relevant amount of data to be showcased so as per this course UKG batch UKG 2013 and fee collection date year start 2013-4-8 there are three students with the name of Moonmoon Preeti and Swaswat who haven't paid the fees so this pay fees link is the one where they need to use to pay the fees of the student then we have this fee imports so in fee imports you have got the liberty of, of selecting what all fees are required for a particular person like let us say this person called Gary and you want that this person Gary to 
appear for only OTP A and not OTP year and which are basically the fee collection dates that we have created and on assigning this Gary's name would be available when there would be a default list of OTP A and not for OTP year end. Well, this is the way how you should be doing this fee collection dates or the uh, fee imports efficiently. Now instant fees is the place where you will be able to manage some more instant fees for all of your students. So you can create some more fees which are separated from the normal fees that, has been, that the student has been paying. this can be used this instant fees can be used for some fundraising programs of the school so once we are done with the finance fees now we will be moving up to the rest part of the finance like category transactions donations and so on so whenever you will be having some transactions you will be you would like to have this transitions categorized into different finance categories so to categorize it, your finance categories you need to create finance category you need to click upon this create finance category link up from here type the name of the category name description and let the person know whether it's an income or not so this way you'll be able to create some finance categories for all of your transactions now let's go to the transactions part whenever you come across transactions you have this links called add expenses add income report compare transactions and revert transactions add expenses and add income as the name suggests you will be able to add some expenses and incomes for your for your institute like let us say that you have this expense as purchase of some goods for your institution and the amount was somewhere around 2500 for the date 22 1 2014 and upon selecting a category called inventory you will be able to save this as an expense so this transaction will be added to the accounts now again if you want to do the income for a particular particular transaction you can also do so by using this add income link up from here then all the reports of a transaction can be seen using the report part so you need to select a start date and end date to see the report of the transactions made so like let us say to see the report I am choosing this 2013 Jan 1 till today so this will give me the list of all the transactions made for this particular period so here is the list which is actually statistical data and a graphical data of all the transactions made for the set time period Then if you want to compare transactions of two different periods, then you can just type the select start date and end date for the two different periods. And then on getting on clicking get get report, you will be able to get the comparative data of, of the of the transactions made of these two different periods. Now reverted transactions is the place where you will be able to see all the transactions that has been reverted for a particular admission number or date or the fee collection name so that was all about the transactions now let's move upon to the donations part so if a donor comes to your institution and wants to donate some money you can also mark it as an income and store the name of the donor along with some description and the transaction date and the amount and on hitting the add button you will be able to add an amount of 100 
with the name of Sam Enterprises. Moreover, the person who, who is donating will always will also get a receipt of the transaction made. Next, let's go to the automated transactions part. Automated transactions is a smart way of dealing with your transactions. As in some of the regions, we have this facility of deletion or the cutting off of some part of the transactions made by some loss and all. So to deal with the scenario, we have this automated transactions part available here. So you need to create this automated transaction by hitting the create button and then mention what percentage of this particular category is to be deducted deducted and then on hitting on you need to type, type the title and a description or two about the automated transaction so this way all the transactions like donation applicant registration florist and income one will be negated a well a by a amount of 5%, 5%, 5% and 5% respectively. So as I have said that payslip is a two-way process. So first of all the person who is in charge of HR has to apply for a payslip for a particular employee and then once it is being approved by the person who is in charge of finance then only this will be marked as a transactions or else if the person who is in charge of finance rejects it then the then that payslip will be available in the rejected payslip part of the HR module so to approve a payslip just go upon view payslip then view payslip you can even approve the payslips by a go for all of your employees using the one click payslip approve payslip and then if you want to approve the payslip of uh, plus one by one then you can view the view them here and then select the department and the month and then approve it one by one then we have the asset liability management up here and asset liability management is basically a place where you will be able to uh, manage your assets and liabilities by marking it and you will be able to view all your assets and create it by using this asset liability management then further we have this tally export so as uh, some of the features that are in tally are not available in Ferina so we have the tally export which is, is actually a bridge between your tally account and Fedina so every time you make a transaction in Fedina it will be it can it can be synced to that of your tally account so this is all about how the finance and HR model model works up now we'll be moving upon to the rest of the modules like the examination and timetable Just like any other module, we need to deal up with the settings and then proceed up with, with the rest part of the module. So let's start up with the settings up here. In the examination module, we have these four links called the set grading levels, ranking levels, class designations, and CC settings. The CC settings are part of CBC school, so we won't be throwing much about it. So let's go to the set grading levels and ranking levels and class designations. So the grading levels are nothing like nothing other than the grading levels that are required for each of the institutions. So here we need to add some grades. So these grades that you will be adding up here can be set as common as well as specific to a particular batch. Moreover, then comes the ranking levels. The ranking levels is basically of can be of that can can be of many types. So for this particular course called UKG, I have created this ranking levels as this. We, I have three ranking levels here called the past, failed, and detained. So here basically I am making some kind of criteria so that every student will be marked upon a particular ranking level 
based upon the marks that they have scored so based upon let us say that for a particular course UKG we have this criteria of 40 percent so every person who scores at most for at least 40 percent in at least four subjects would be marked as passed so to do so to create such a scenario in the ranking levels we need to type the name here passed set the mark limit type as lower which means at least and the percentage should be 40 percent and the subjects for the limit type being lower so here you can create the rest of the ranking levels this way and then let's go to the class designations in class designations you will be able to do the same that of the ranking levels but the limitation that you have here is you have only one kind of criteria here so you here you need to type the name of the class designation and then the percentage once you have entered this you are ready to deal with the class designations here so this is all about the settings that are to be done then let's go to the exam management in exam management you will be able to create some new exam munitions for your students and then enter results and so on so to create an examination for your course let us say UKG you need to select the batch first of all and then click upon new so you need to type the exam name here like let us say you have this exam and then the exam type is marks so the basically the e process of evaluation will be marks so on hitting the save button you will be able to see a form where you need to type the maximum marks and the minimum marks for all of your subjects like let us say I am entering the maximum marks as 100 and the minimum marks as 40 so this will be coming up here and now once you have typed the maximum mark and minimum mark for all of this for all of these subjects now you need to enter the start time and end time for these subjects so here the start time and end time would include the date and the time of the examination moreover once you have entered all this you can proceed with the third column of this particular table which says do not create examination so like for a particular exam you might not like to have some examinations for a particular subject so to do so you can click upon they do not create so the exams won't be created for the particular subject unlike the rest so on clicking save and changes examination will be created for this particular batch as you can see that exam 1111 has been created now once the examination has been created it's time to see publish the exam schedule so whenever you will be type, publishing the exam schedule you need to click upon this publish exam schedule and now this will be available for all the students in this particular batch and moreover this will be available in the school calendar also so once this exam schedule has been published now the students marks are to be entered so to enter the name marks of the student just click upon the exam group and then the subject and then start entering the marks for each of your students so once you have entered the marks for each of your students like this you can hit the save button you will get a flash message which says exam scores updated and now once you have entered the results of all the marks now just click upon publish exam result 
on clicking publish exam result you will be able to see the exam result or this exam result will be published for all the person for all the students in the batch so once this exam result is published you will be able to see the the students will be able to see the marks in their own profiles so this is all about the exam management now once this ex this things the results has been entered now you need to generate the report so that this will be available or for the students to be checked up so you need to click upon generate reports up here and um, then you need to select the course for this this exam report to be generated and now clicking generate the reports will be generated for these students so now on seeing the report center up here in the examination part you will be able to see different kinds of reports that are available for this particular for for this for the particular examination created so like we have this exam wise report where you will be able to see the reports exam wise of all your students then we have the subject wise reports grouped exam reports and so on where we'll be able to see different different kinds of reports for all of the students in our institution so this is how the examination model works up and let's go to the attendance of the students so the attendance module has two links attendance register and attendance report the attendance register as you can see consists of of a, of a two links which says select a batch two labels which says select a batch and then select a subject so as this attendance type is subject wise you are asked to enter the subject then if this attendance type would be daily wise you would be asked to enter the batch and then this register would be seen up for you so you can mark any person as absent for the state by just by clicking upon the particular cell and then typing the reason would mark any person as absent and then the attendance report helps you to mark a helps you to see the report of all of your all of your students so you need to click upon the batch here and then the subject and then the mode whether it's overall or monthly if you're going for overall you'll be able to see the percentage of attendance of all the students in this particular batch moreover we have this filter up here which helps you to filter the percentage we will filter student based upon the percentage of attendance that they have scored so on clicking filter you will be able to see that Abhishek is a person who has scored a percentage of attendance below 90 percent so now this completes the most of the more main modules of Fedina. Now we are left with some other small modules like the SMS module, news module, and event creation. So let's start up with the SMS module. SMS module is the most interesting part of the module, where which helps you to send SMS from your application. So let's click upon SMS settings. Uh, you need to enable this as application from here and then clicking upon update will give you all these options up here so on selecting student admission every time student is admitted into your application into your application the sms will be going up to the particular person saying that uh, giving the login credentials of the system and then the exam schedule or exam result on enabling this part you will be able to uh, enter the exam schedule or you uh, whenever the exam schedule or exam result is published for a student SMS would be applying up to him or her then comes the attendance and events whenever the student is absent the ward and the student will get an uh, SMS alert saying that the part this particular person was absent on this date and then we have this events where whenever you will be creating an event and the concerned person will be getting an SMS so 
this is the way how this SMS settings are to be done and then we have this SMS to students where you'll be able to send SMS to your students batches employees and departments and even all you can even see the SMS from logs from the SMS logs link up here which says this so now let's finish up the news part here so news is the interesting model where you will be able to add some news for your students so to add a new news just click upon add link from here and then and then type the name of the title the content and then the published news link helps you to publish some news for your students then the, we are left with the last part of this thing which says the manage news and even creation so whenever you'll be creating a news this news will be available in this part of the dashboard so the top three recent news will be available in the dashboard then comes the event creation so if you want to create an event for all of your students just type the title here description and mention whether it's a holiday or not and if this event is common to all you can even click and click this to enable this event so this is the way how you'll be able to create some event and whenever there's an event creation or examination or an fees collection date published this will be available in the calendar so as you can see that events examinations holidays and dues are respectively the legends for legends can be marked by this color codes black blue green and red respectively so this completes the basic overview of the core modules. Now we are ready to go up with the query session. Please put forward your queries if you have any right now.